The NFC is super weird. We were in our 5 a.m. meeting this morning, and we're like, we can't keep having this conversation. Mm -hmm. But like, who's the best team in the NFC? Who's the team to beat? Because you can make the case for a lot of them. So I thought maybe we could just do like a progress report, like a, an evaluation, some homework on each of these teams. What's good, what's bad, what we should be looking out for as we do hit week 12 and on when every game matters and every game's pit, uh, pivotal. So we split it up as a table. And Sean, you've got the Bucks. Peter, mm. you've got Dish the Rams. And then Kyle, you drew, drew the Packers straw. Okay. I'll take the Cardinals. Sean, give me the lowdown on the Bucks right now. All right, progress report for the Bucks. Look, there was a couple of weeks where things went a little sideways. The dog ate their homework. They messed up on a pop quiz. Yeah. But they're 4.0 students. They're straight A's. They're going to get the extra money from mom and dad. And when you look at what Tom Brady has brought to this offense, because of how well he's playing, it, it, it's not just one guy all the time. Like, he spreads it out. He threw the ball six times to three different receivers. He's getting everybody involved. Edwards, Godwin, Fournette. Fournette's been their leading receiver in a couple of these games. Mm -hmm. And I just feel like with Tom Brady, when he gets rolling, there was a play in, in this game where you just felt like Tom gets it. This little scramble right here, Kyle, you showed this in the highlight, this little mm -hmm. hurdle right there. But it's what he does after the run. This emotion right here. I mean, the eruption from the crowd. I mean, they might as well have fired the cannons right here after this scramble. 11 yards for Tom Brady. That's like a 55-yard run for anybody it else. Is. But <laughs> the fist pump, the heads, the LFG. Yep. He didn't have his podcast with you on Monday night, but I think that was a good Do replacement. Do they have the best chance of winning the conference? I think so. Uh, they're the defending Super Bowl champions. We saw them at this time last year crescendoing up. This is the same exact point. And I think when you look at what they can do offensively, th there isn't a defense that they can't break down. And when Tom Brady is on, he's the best in the business. Mm. Pretty good. Pretty good. Um, they got handled by a team earlier this season out in L.A. And they got handled by the same team last year in, in Tampa Bay. And I'm going to pick a team to talk about the Rams. And, and it's a team that is coming off two terrible losses. The Titans game was an embarrassment on Sunday Night Football. Then they have eight days to prepare for the 49ers. And the 49ers, I think, just scored another rushing touchdown. Another? Right throat. It was just another one right there. So how could you come in and be like, go, go, right. go, Rams? It's hard. And yet... They got the bye week, and I look at that offense, and it's like, all right, McVay, take a step off the pedal, get into the lab, and use all of last week to go work on whatever we're going to make of this thing. And I think they still have five of the best players in all of football. Aaron Donald, to me, is the best defensive player in football. Jalen Ramsey might be the second best defensive player in all of football. Von Miller, if healthy, can be the third best defensive player in all of football. They've got the best wide receiver in football in Cooper Cup, and he leads in all statistical categories. And then you got Matt Stafford. I, I don't know what Odell Beckham becomes. And I think that's what McVay spent the entire mm -hmm. week trying to figure out. Yeah. Remember, they lost Cam Akers. That was a major blow. They lost Robert Woods. That was a major blow. This was the week where they could pull things back and say, okay, we've got all of this talent. How do we use that technology to then put it together and have it work out on the field? I would expect nothing less than the Rams to come out and be dialed in and ready to play the Packers. When I tell you that McVay did not take that loss to the 49ers lightly, I say that with maybe some underestimation of how annoyed he was with how that thing went down. So I would think they've built an offense over the, over the bye week. I would think that the defense is going to gel together, and I would think Von Miller is back and healthy. I like the Rams still, even though they're second place in their division right now, and they're a wild card Is there team. any weakness to that? Yeah, the weakness is it's the 2011 Eagles. Mm -hmm. It's a lot of fancy players and a lot of shiny names, and the 49ers are scoring 31 points and running mm -hmm. for about 500 yards they on them because they're not tough enough. It's very dramatic. Like, this is going to come down to Odell making a play, like, they in a big him. game. It's, it's not, not a luxury. It's not fun. I know. It's like, we need Odell to be one of the better players. Yeah. Wow. He's the That's number two option. That's kind of scary to me. Yeah, it is a scary Packers. thing. I haven't done it in years. Um, I'll talk about the Packers. So um, Mike's son gets report cards now. It's all these satisfactory, above satisfactory, below satisfactory. It's not those letter grades yet. I think they're above satisfactory across the board. They are 8-2 and two with Aaron Rodgers. One of those losses being the very strange week one to the Saints. Um, they're the only team in the NFL to beat the Kyler Murray Cardinals. They beat Kyler Murray Cardinals. All the other Cardinals losses were without Kyler. And they went in and did it on the road on a short week without Devontae Adams, one of the best wins of the entire year. Their defense looked like it took its lumps last week, and they did. They're still statistically really good. They're top five. They're still there. And they almost sort of made that clutch play at the end of Darnell Savage when they called it wasn't an interception. 
Um, here's why I would invest in them. I'm not really interested this time of year about hearing how everybody's injured, unless you're gonna talk about players who are gonna come back. Yeah. If you rank the Packers five best players on their entire team, three of them are out right now and coming back. Aaron Jones, Jair Alexander, and David Bakhtiari, we think. That is a huge difference to get those guys back. I don't care if they're injured and they're out, fine. That's football. But if those guys come back in the next few weeks, that is not we got our tight end or we got our left guard, due respect, Sean. Those are three star players who are going to return to a team that's already 8-2 and two with their starting quarterback. The thing with Rodgers, toe is weird when he says it's very, very painful. I don't love that. I've seen toes end careers of Hall of Famers before, but he did look brilliant through it against Minnesota. So, like, same old Packers, got to invest in them. They'll be there in the end. They just don't know if they're going to win the whole thing. Yeah, it didn't look like the toe slowed him down at all. I know, good. That defense was looking good, too. So, nobody mentioned the Bucks. Mm hmm I guess. Well, I know you did. Cowboys. You did. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Cowboys mm -hmm. weren't mentioned. Uh, I'll ask you guys about Arizona, just because... Talking about injuries, I do think injuries matter when guys leave and the teams are still good. Like what the Saints sort of did the last two years without Drew Brees. You don't have Kyler Murray, you don't have DeAndre Hopkins for almost a month and you're two and one in that time. That's huge. J.J. Watt was a game changer on the field when he was out there. They lost him and didn't skip a beat there. In fact, still the fourth best defense in the National Football League without Kyler and DeAndre Hopkins. They've somehow stayed above water and they're still top five as far as offense is concerned. I just ask you, Kyle, if you mm -hmm. take away the logos, if you take sure. away the colors and the uniforms, is and just look at the resume this year, is there any real reason to doubt this team if we're giving them a report card? This is the only reason I would see, is that Tom Brady, Aaron Rodgers, even Matthew Stafford, long veteran. Has Kyler ever won a huge game in the NFL? Like, he just hasn't. And I, maybe it's not his fault, maybe it's just the youth. Has Cliff ever won a huge game in the NFL? It makes me nervous. The roster is great, the team is great. I love how they run it. I love the James Conner and all that. Cliff and Kyler, it's very rare that you see someone going from winning nothing in the playoffs yeah. to like really going on a run. The you experience know, thing you know is what I, what I, when you sure. say that, I think they're still in first place, they're nine and two, and what you're saying is probably true that we haven't even seen the best out of this mm. team. And that makes me look, have we seen the best out of this entire team no. together? No, absolutely not. Yeah. They can go 15 and two, be the number one seed, and I think they could be underdogs in that divisional round just because yeah. of the historical context so that they're right. coming basically out of nowhere and you're going up against Rodgers, you're going up against, like, if Tampa finishes 10 and seven and goes into Arizona yeah. in the playoffs, the Bucks are the favorite. That's just yeah. what it's gonna be. Okay, they're gonna have to do it before everyone believes in them. And that's just what it is. So Arizona true. definitely feels different with how physical they are offensively now. Chase Edmonds earlier on and now James Conner. So that definitely kind of makes you feel different. Uh -huh. But to your point, yeah, Kyler, like, I don't even know if, when he comes back, is he gonna play great right away? We saw Aaron Rodgers struggle his first game. Uh -huh. Russell Wilson uh -huh. hasn't been the same. That's just one of the questions. Are you mad at the have. Cowboys? Hmm. Yeah, well, I'm a disappointed. Yeah. Very, I've been saying for weeks, this one's different. This is a different, it's not the same old Cowboys. I hope I'm wrong, but I'm very disappointed because I thought this team was special and I don't know if they are. They've got Vegas coming to town that game at 4.30 Eastern on CBS.